It is a hot, humid, sunny day here in October in South Florida. Some of the best weather you can ask for. And today we are playing at Palm Beach Kennel Club, somewhere I haven't been in over a year and a half. I got invited to a 5-10 private game. I head inside, I grab some chips and buy in for $2,500, which is the max. Let's get started. I've got a lot of hands to share with you guys, so we are gonna do some rapid fire hand history here. Under the gun raises to 50. I make the call with pocket threes next to act and the button makes the call as well. No set for us on an ace, queen, six, two spade board. I check after the under the gun player checks and the button checks behind. Turn card four of spades and under the gun now checks again. I decide to turn my pocket threes into a bluff given the fact that I don't think I have much showdown value here. I think I could get other pocket pairs to fold or pairs like sevens, eights, tens, maybe even a queen to fold. So I throw out a bet of $65. When structuring this bluff, I was pretty sure I would get called here on the turn and have to fire a big bet on the river unless there was another spade or the board paired. And that's exactly what happens when the button makes to call for 65 and the under the gun player makes to call as well. I don't expect any of them to have a flush. I'm basically the only player who can really have a flush in this situation. So when the river card is the nine of diamonds, no more spades on the board. The board doesn't pair as well. I don't think the button has a flush because I think he may raise the turn. I think the under the gun player would probably bet a flush draw or bet a flush on the turn. So I turn my pocket threes into a bluff and put out a bet of 350 bucks. Looking back, I don't think pocket threes are the best combination here to bluff with just because we don't block any flushes that my opponents could potentially have. If I had the king of spades in my hand, the jack of spades or 10 of spades, I think that would be a better candidate to turn into a bluff here on the river. My opponent on the button is a younger kid who told me that he watches all my poker vlogs and he is in the tank now for a while. Looks like he's contemplating a hero call or a hero fold. Given the fact that he watches my vlogs, I'm hoping that my tighter image will pay off for me here. I normally don't put out big river bluffs, especially in the two players, and he eventually folds, which is nice. Under the gun player folds as well, and the button later told me he folded two pair. Somewhat of a suicide bluff here, our first hand at Palm Beach Kennel Club, but it works out for us this time, scooping a decent pot. Next up, I have ace jack offsuit from the under the gun position. I raise it up to 3x, 30 bucks, and the button makes the call along with the small blind. So we're three ways to a top pair, top kicker flop for us. Four, five, jack, rainbow. When it checks to me, I bet one third. The button folds and the small blind calls. Turn queen of diamonds, bringing in a flush draw. Now the small blind goes with a lead of $80. I find this kind of interesting here. I don't think he's going to have many queen x hands that calls here on the flop. He could be doing this with flush draws, a jack x hand, maybe a hand like 6-7 or 8-9 for a bluff. So I decided to go with a thin value raise on this turn. I make it 250 bucks. The small blind does call 250, so I'm a little bit concerned now. He could have a queen x hand, maybe a flush draw, and the river card is not good for us. It's the 10 of diamonds, so that backdoor flush gets there. One of those hands he could have been bluffing with on the turn. When he checks, I check back, and ace jack is good. The next hand, there's an early position limp for $10. Playing shorthanded, the cutoff makes it $50. With king queen offsuit in the blinds, I decide to go with a three bet bluff to $225, hoping that I can just take this down pre-flop but that doesn't happen the cutoff player who I bluffed out of the first hand shows me who's boss here and puts in a four bet over 600 bucks and I snap fold this is my first time playing in this private style invite only game so I actually tend to three bet or four bet a little less often pre-flop I think recreational players sometimes get a little bit sick of younger players putting in big raises pre-flop so I tend to just call more often in these type of games and that's exactly what happens in this next hand i had three bet a few times so far in the session the button opens it up to 30 dollars, and with ace king in the small blind i decided to just call and we go heads up to the flop now that i'm looking back at the footage i actually bought the button so there was no other player left behind me just calling here in the small blind is probably not the best play but i think it's fine as well the flop comes out king king seven two hearts so now i'm definitely wishing i three bet pre-flop 
The flop action goes check check and the turn is a 5. I lead out for $50 and now the button raises me to 125 bucks. He has about $800 left in his stack and I have to figure out what I want to do here. I think when he makes this raise, he has a hand like pocket 10s, 9s, 8s, or jacks, something that he checked back with on the flop and then now is trying to get a cheap showdown here on the river by raising the turn. I think I should re-raise here sometimes and sometimes call. This time I decide to call on the river cards the three of spades, and now I decide to go with an unorthodox lead. I'm hoping he has those single pocket pairs like 8s, 9s, 10s, and jacks that won't be folding to a bet. So I lead out here for $400 and he snap folds. I showed him that I had the goods ace king for trips and he told me he had a heart flush draw. I do think I should have just been re-raising on the turn. I think I butchered this hand from the start. Probably should have three bet pre, re-raised the turn, or if I just called the turn, I should have checked the river and allowed him to bluff. But one of the reasons why poker is so much fun is that you can make the wrong decision and play a hand terribly and still win. In this hand, I have pocket fives. I raise it up and get a call from the blind. I flop bottom set on a 10. 75 board Yahtzee that is what I'm talking about I put out a bet and he snap folds no action there with our set of fives fast forward now about 30 minutes there's an early position raise to 30 I peel back kings in middle position I re-raise to 125 and he ends up making the call heads up in position to four deuce deuce two diamonds he checks and this is one of the best boards you can ask for with pocket kings no ace, no scare cards. I bet out big $200 and he folds. So, so far today, we've made some pretty big hands, but really haven't gotten too much action. Just kind of chugging along up about $200 so far. About 30 minutes later, we switch dealers and we end up playing a double board PLO bomb pot. The flop comes out king high and ace high. And in my hand, I have pocket aces and a king along with a five. So I flop top set on one board and top pair top kicker on the other board. I bet out 125 and everybody folds. We take this one down. I have no clue how to play these PLO bomb pots. So I usually play them pretty slow, but in this hand, I have a full house on the top board with Jack 10. So I think I have the third nuts. And then on the second board, I have a Jack high flush for the third nuts as well. And I think when you have the third nuts and the third nuts, that's a pretty good hand, so I bet out $500 on the river. I get called by a flush and a 10, so a pretty sick cooler by my opponent. He ended up having very strong hands on both boards as well, and we end up scooping this one, which is lucky for us. A fairly slow start, I'm in the game for $2,700, but after those two bomb pot wins, I now have a $3,800 stack. In this hand, I have a beautiful ace, 10 of clubs from under the gun raised to $30. The cutoff player calls and the button three bets me to $110. The button player is an older gentleman that goes by Mr. Bill. We're gonna be seeing him a little bit later on here. The small blind cold calls $110 and with a suited ace i think i just have to call which is what i do in the cutoff calls as well so we're four ways in a three bet pot and i flop top pair on a pretty dicey board ace three five all diamonds small blind checks i'm not going to be leading out on this board into the three better so i check cutoff checks and the button checks behind turn card is the four of spades so it brings in a straight with six seven also brings in a deuce for a straight as well Small blind checks, I check again, just trying to get to showdown, cut off checks for a second time, and the button checks back for a second time. The river card is an interesting one. It's the ace of spades, so now it gives us trips. Small blind checks for a third time, and I think this is now a good spot to put out a large bet, hoping to get hero called by a hand like queens, jacks, or kings. So I throw out 450 bucks. If you remember in the first hand I played with pocket threes, I put out a very large bet on the river as a bluff, which means when I do have value, I should be betting large as well, just to balance out my bluffs to value hands. Now, I don't think it matters too often because I don't play that often with these players, but the cutoff folds, the button who three bet me pre-flop ends up calling. I tell him I have an ace and it is good. And we end up taking this one down. 
We haven't seen aces yet in this session, been playing for over three hours until now. Red aces, there's a raise to 30, I3 bet to 125, and my opponent makes the call. We're heads up to a king 6 3 rainbow board. When he checks to me, I decide to get a little tricky here and check this one back. One, because my hand needs basically no protection and the board is very dry. The turn cards to Queen of Diamonds and now my opponent leads for 125. I could spring the trap and raise now, but I would like to keep his bluffs in. Also, I don't want to get him off a hand like Queen Jack or Ace Queen, so I make the call. And the river is one of the best cards in the deck. It's the three of hearts, so now it counterfeits a hand like King Queen. It's less likely he flopped a set of threes because there's two on the board, and he now leads out for $200. With around $700 left in my opponent's stack, this is the time that we do spring the trap. We slow played on the flop, we just called the turn, and now we are going to raise all in, trying to get max value from those King X hands. Maybe he'll even hero call me with a Queen X hand. I raise it up to $1,500. This bet covers him, and he goes into the tank. He doesn't snap call, which means we have the best hand. Obviously, I'm hoping he has a King X hand, maybe a Queen X hand that he wants to hero call with. This is why I like to sometimes slow play and get a little tricky, is because I feel like it might be a little bit harder to play against. If I only bet my strong hands and check my weak hands, people can play pretty easily against me. Eventually he folds, so he probably didn't have too much there, and we win this pot. I told you I would play a hand with Mr. Bill, which is the older gentleman sitting here on my right, and I play a pretty sick pot with him where I call a raise out of the big blind with Queen Jack, and the flop comes out deuce, three, five, two hearts. The action checks all the way around. The turn's a queen. I check, and Mr. Bill puts out a bet. The river's another queen, giving me trips. The pot is around $150 to $200. I check, and Mr. Bill throws out a $400 bet. Well... With trips, I don't think I can fold in a single raise pot after he checks back the flop, so I call and he shows me the goods with 4-6 for a flop straight, and Mr. Bill ends up scooping down this pot. He tells me that he watches all my videos, so if I have to lose my money to somebody, I'm glad it's going to somebody who supports my channel. Now leading into the last hand of the night, which ends up being the biggest hand of the night. The button straddles to 25, small blind calls 25, big blind calls 25, and now a new player in the hijack raises to 150 bucks. I have ace king of diamonds next to act, and I decide to put in a three bet here, a pretty standard three bet to $400. The action's back over on the hijack who started the hand with around $1,400. If he jams it all in, I'm just going to have to call, probably going to be behind if he does that, but eventually he decides to put in the call. So we're going heads up here in a 3-bet pot. My opponent has about $1,200 left, and we see a terrible flop for our hand, 10-6-7 with one diamond. When my opponent raises to $150 and then calls my 3-bet out of position, I put him on hands like pocket 10s, jacks, queens, ace-king, ace-queen, and maybe sometimes some traps with aces and kings. So on this 10-high board, I think it's just a terrible board for me. If he has a pair, he's never going to be folding to a bet. If he has ace-king or ace-queen, we're either chopping or way ahead. So I decide to check back this flop, and we see a magical turn card of the Jack of Diamonds. Now it doesn't improve our hand, but it gives us a flush draw, a straight draw, and a royal flush draw. The hijack now leads into me for $250, and I honestly think our only option is just to call here, just because he can have pocket tens for a set, pocket jacks for a set, queens are never folding, he could have ace king, which is chopping against us, so I think just calling is good here going to the final card which is the king of clubs so we miss our flush draw we miss our straight draw and we missed our royal draw but we do end up hitting top pair top kicker my opponent has eight hundred dollars left in his stack and the action's back over on him if he jams all in here for eight hundred dollars i actually think we could fold our hand just because i don't think he'd be going all in with any hand that we're beating ace queen now makes a straight pocket tens pocket jacks or a set king jack king 10 are two pairs we're already losing to aces i don't think he would ever be jamming queens as a bluff so if he goes all in we'll be in a nasty spot but 
he eventually checks over to me. I now have to figure out, should I put out a thin, small value bet on the river? The board is fairly connected. It is a three bet pot. He only has $800 left. I'm not sure if he's gonna be calling a big bet with a 10X hand, a hand like Ace Jack. Pocket Queens probably aren't gonna be calling a big bet. A king is never folding, so it's not really worth betting here on the river. So I decide to check back and I'm a little disappointed that I did when he shows king queen of hearts for top pair queen kicker. I show ace king for top pair ace kicker. And this is basically one of the only hands that he shows up here with that I could probably get max value here on the river. However, I'm okay with the way I played this hand. I think a check back is fine. And we end up taking down this fairly large pot on the last hand of the night. That is it for this one. Ended up playing about five hours here at West Palm Beach Kennel Club. I haven't been here in probably about a year and a half since like April of 2021. I filmed two or three vlogs here then, but I have to say I am very impressed. They've got some new tables coming in, new chairs, some cool murals on the wall, new carpet. The place looks good. And even better is I'm allowed to film here. So it's cool that, you know, South Florida is starting to, you know, turn the tables a little bit back two years ago no filming at all and now i can film at hard rock seminal coconut creek at the aisle here at west palm beach and openly being able to film is just awesome so i really appreciate the management the dealers and the staff here at west palm beach for allowing me to film the game was great also uh tons of tons of action and i just ran really well i didn't really get into many tough spots i made some good hands my good hands held and uh one cooler there queen jack versus the flop straight but uh you know had to give it over to mr bill there he deserves it when this video comes out it's coming out thursday november 3rd the next day friday november 4th i'll be playing on best bet jacksonville live stream it's like a 510 maybe 510 25 game so if you guys want to watch me playing a live stream tune into their channel and then the video after that will be you know recapping those hands hope you guys enjoyed this one a little bit of a different location for this video if you liked the video hit that thumbs up button comment down below if you have any questions or anything like that and make sure to subscribe to the channel until next time i'll see you